Got another bunch of questions on the amount of substance topic. And as always, the link to the questions is in the description of the video if you wanted to try them first. Okay, so for question one, the first thing we're gonna do is work out how many moles of each part of this hydrated salt we've got. So we've got an anhydrous part, just the aluminum sulfate part, and obviously the water part. And what we're trying to do is establish the mole ratio between the anhydrous and the water. So it's two uh, mass over MR calculations to get the moles. So the moles of aluminum sulfate, mass over MR 0.02, moles of H2O 5.76. So where does that come from? It's obviously the difference between the total mass of the hydrated salt and the mass of the anhydrous salt formed. So the mass of water divided by its MR. So to turn that into a simple whole number ratio, we just divide the bigger number by the smaller number. It's a one to 16 ratio, so X is 16. Question two, in terms of electron transfer, the aluminum has been oxidized. It's gone from the aluminum atom to the aluminium three plus ion in the aluminium chloride, so it's obviously lost three electrons to do that. Remember, oxidation is loss of electrons, but you would need to specify the amount. Part B, so the first thing we're gonna do is work out how many moles of hydrogen have been formed. So you can see there's a two to three ratio between the aluminium and hydrogen. So the moles of hydrogen is three over two times the moles of aluminium, so we get that number there. And then to turn it into a volume, in decimeters cubed at RTP, we just multiply by 24, the molar gas volume, 2.88 decimeters cubed. Part C, the mass of aluminum chloride formed, well, the moles of aluminum chloride is gonna be the same as the moles of aluminum. It's the one to one ratio between them, so it's 0.08 moles of aluminum chloride formed. So if we multiply that by its MR, we get the mass, let's say calculate the value, three significant figures, 10.7 grams. And then the last part, the volume in centimetres cubed of the hydrochloric acid needed. So the moles of hydrochloric acid needed is going to be three times the moles of aluminium because of the ratio between those two chemicals. So we need 0.24 moles of hydrochloric acid. So the volume needed is going to be the moles of the concentration. That's going to give us an answer in decimetres cubed. And then we multiply by 1,000 and we get 200 centimetres cubed. Tricky question number three, well the second part is I think, but the first bit's fairly straightforward. The amount of moles of sulfuric acid needed to only neutralize the sodium hydroxide. So you can see this volume here is just neutralizing the sodium hydroxide. So it's just concentration times volume, 0.0018 moles of sulfuric acid. So to get the concentration of the sodium hydroxide in solution X, first thing we need to do is work out how many moles of sodium hydroxide we've got. So obviously the ratio in the equation is telling us that for every mole of sulfuric acid, there's two moles of sodium hydroxide reacting. So we double the moles of sulfuric acid. So we get that for the moles of sodium hydroxide. That's in the 25 cm cubed sample. And so concentration is moles divided by the volume. So we get 0.144 moles per decimeters cubed. Just remember that volume needs to be in decimeters cubed. So part B, it switches to asking about the sodium hydrogen carbonate. This is where it gets tricky, I think. So the first thing you've got to do is work out how many moles of sulfuric acid is needed just for the sodium hydrogen carbonate. So those two titra values in the table, if we subtract them, 11.5 cm cubed will be needed to neutralize just the sodium hydrogen carbonate. So from that, we can work out how many moles of sulfuric acid are in those, that 11.5 cm cubed portion. Concentration times volume, so we get that. The moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate in the 25 cm cubed sample is gonna be double that from the ratio in the equation. So we get that. And then the moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate in the 200 cm cubed solution is gonna be eight times the moles in 25, because 200 is eight times bigger. So we get that. And then the second part follows on from that, the mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate in that 200 cm cubed solution of X. So we've just established there's that many moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate in the solution. So all we need to do is multiply by the MR of sodium hydrogen carbonate, which is 84. 
If you get a calculated value of that, so the three significant figures, it's 1.55 grams. So well done if you got that bit right. That's tricky, I think. Moving on to number four. So the first thing we've got to do is work out the moles of molybdenum oxide, so just mass over MR, 0.02. The moles of hydrogen that's going to react with it is going to be three times as many, 0.06. And the volume of hydrogen at RTP in centimetres cubed, which is multiplied by 24,000, which is the molar gas volume in centimetres cubed, 1,440 centimetres cubed. Moving on to number five now. So the first thing we're going to do is work out how many moles of hydroxide ions there are in the solution. So that's just concentration times volume in decimetres cubed. That many there. The moles of MOH twice is going to be half that. So we just half that and get that. That's going to be the same as the moles of M. So the ratio is just 1 to 1 there. So we just keep that number. So the MR of M is going to be mass over moles, 87.7 grams per mole. So that's one of the answers we've got to give. So therefore you look in group 2 and it's strontium. Number six starts nice and easy, so it's just moles of silver chloride is mass over MR, 0.06. Moving on to part two, it's a little bit trickier this, so I'm just going to use this diagram to help me explain. So if we think about what's happening in this little experiment, they've taken a, a known mass of XCl2, they've dissolved it in, in water, that's obviously generated aqueous ions, obviously they'd be in that ratio there. This, uh, they've added silver nitrate, and the silver ions have obviously picked up and reacted with the chloride ions present and formed the silver chloride precipitate. So we've just established that there are 0.06 moles of silver chloride. So I've highlighted these here because they're actually the same uh, quantity. So we, if we follow the mole ratio through, we know that there must be 0.06 moles of chloride ions present. Those chloride ions are those. You can't apply a mole ratio between two separate equations, so this is also 0.06. And then if we follow the ratio to the start, we're going to need to half that to get the moles of XCl2. So that's going to be 0.03. So from that, we can work out the MR of XCl2, mass over moles. So it's 95.3. We know there's two chlorines in there, so if we subtract the MR of two chlorines, that's 71, we get a remainder of 24.3. So that's obviously the relative atomic mass of X. Which member of group 2 has that MR? Magnesium. So moving on to the final question, it's an ideal gas equation question to get the moles of um, compound A. Then we can work out its MR and then we can work out how many um, bromines and fluorines must make up the compound. So rearranging PV equals NRT for N, we get that. So if we sub in the numbers, just be careful with your unit conversions. So pascals are the correct units for the ideal gas equation, so that just goes straight in. Centimetres cubed, we can't use them, we've got to turn them into cubic metres. So all I do is just put 10 to the minus 6 after it, so 76 times 10 to the minus 6 is that in metres cubed. 8.314 is the gas constant, and we can't use Celsius, degrees Celsius, we've got to put that into Kelvin, so we add 100 onto 273 and get 373. So that's how many moles of compound A are present. So when we do mass over moles for A, we get an MR of 174.6 grams per mole. So working out the molecular formula of A, it's a bit of trial and error. So the way I started was I assumed that if there were two bromines in the compound, so Br2F, what would be the MR of that? Well, it's 159 for your two bromines plus 19 for your fluorine. That's 178, which is too heavy. So it's not that. It's therefore there's only one bromine in there. So if there's only one bromine in compound A, if we take the, the molar mass, 174.6, and then subtract from that one bromine, so that's 79.9, .9, 
we get 94.7 as a remainder. And then if we divide that by the MR of fluorine, which is 19, you get 5. So the molecular formula of A must be BrF5.